To all you Rovers fans out there on this Mowbray day after Tuesday night's football match between Shrewsbury and Gillingham, it's official. We are now in the automatic promotion places. It's in our hands. Next up for Rovers is Walsall away. Cheers. That's right, folks, back once again with another preview this time, counting down to the next match up against Walsall at their place. It is Mowbray Day, which means one year to the day since the gaffer took over from that scoundrel, scumbag of a manager that we call Owen Coyle. But we'll talk more about the Walsall game and Mowbray Day in just one second. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Yes, one year since the gaffer has been in charge. And since then, obviously, we've we've tumbled down a division, but it was no fault of his own. That was all down to the toxic cancer that is Owen Coyle, who should never, ever, ever have been anywhere near Blackburn Rovers, especially with his links to Burnley. A horrendous appointment. I don't know who was behind that. Someone was having a giggle when they made that appointment. But anyway, things have got a lot better with Mowbray in charge. Obviously, job not done yet, but it's a little bit more comfortable now that we have played the same games as Shrewsbury, who are our main competitors for that second spot. Obviously, we've got three games in hand, and I'm, I'm expecting them to push themselves back towards the top end of the table within a few days. Uh, but anyway, about the match against Walsall, it takes place this weekend, Saturday the 24th of February, at the Bescott Stadium down in Walsall. Last season, Walsall finished 14th in the division, and the top goal scorer is Erwin Utsimer. We'll talk more about him in a minute. And they are currently managed by the man John Whitney. Also currently find themselves in around about 16th place. So it's, it's not too too far off the position they finished last season. I expect them to finish in and around that place again this season. Uh, I don't expect any too many relegation issues. Over the years, the two teams have met 16 times in all competitions. Also winning two of them, Rovers winning nine of them. And there has been five draws between them. As for the last five fixtures at the Bescott Stadium, they look like this. Rovers haven't lost there since 1973 when they lost 2-0. Uh, but the last time out that these two sides met was at the Bescott Stadium. It was the 26th of October 1999. The last time that Blackburn were in the uh, second tier of English football. Walsall was up, up there. Uh, and that ended in a 1-1 draw. So you have to go all the, all the way back to 1973, the last time that Warsaw beat Blackburn at their own place. But that means nothing. Uh, we did take on Warsaw quite recently. They were a little bit, they were a little tricky. They did uh, manage to cause some problems. In the end, Rovers did overpower them. I think they won 3-1. We'll talk more about that as well in a second. But let's take a look at the starting 11. This is how I feel Warsaw will line up on Saturday. Robertson Gold, Devlin, Fitzwater, Guthrie, Leary, Morris, Dobson, Chambers, Edwards, Bakayoko, and Otsimer. Huh. Funny that, he's in a he's in a Rovers kit. Oh maybe I maybe I'm getting ahead of myself there. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, let's take a look at the form box. Anyway, uh Otsimer tops the scorers with 14 goals. Bakayoko's there with eight. Edwards has got six and Leary has got three goals. As for the discipline, uh Bakayoko's got six yellows. Chambers has got five, Edwards has got five, and Guthrie has three into the red. Only one player. Bakayoko's got a red. As for the form book, last. Five fixtures for Warsaw looked like this last time out. They took on our new favourite team, Gillingham, and they drew 0-0. Before that, they beat Doncaster 4-2 at the best Scott. Before that, and it's not too bad form, actually, when you look back. Uh, before that, they took on Gary Bowyer's Blackpool at Bloomfield Road and drew 2-2. All the way back, 3rd of February, uh, Warsaw defeated Milton Keynes at the best Scott. And all the way back, 3rd of January, there it is, Blackburn Rovers beat Warsaw at Ewood Park. So, look at their recent form. It's not too shabby. The past four, since we beat them on the 30th of January, they've gone on a little unbeaten run, four games, and it looks like they've been quite comfortable at home, winning the past two at least. I don't know. That might that might even stretch further back. But Warsaw, uh, not a, they're not an easy opposition. They're one of them tricky ones, like a Northampton, uh, and we've struggled against them of late. Even Berry uh, on Monday night, we struggled until the second half to finally uh, put them away. So, yes. It's it. There are difficult, more more challenging fixtures, I think, but it's not going to be easy for Rovers. And speaking of Rovers, let's take a look at how I think they will line up. I'm going to, look at this. I'm going all crazy now with these new formations. Uh, going with a 4-3-3 of sorts. Uh, Ryer in goal: Naimbi, Lenhan, Mulgrew, Bell, Smallwood, uh, Bennett, Dak, Armstrong, and Antonson coming back in there. And Graham still leading the line. Cannot drop Armstrong or Graham. 
Uh, they are scoring for fun at the moment. And Dak, obviously, our most creative player and probably one of the first names of the sheet. Smallwood is there, is there as well. And Bennett, back to that usual role that they've been getting a bit comfortable with. Uh, I think that Evans' experiment the on, the on the other day was a bit of a bust. Uh, and yes, I've been bold and dropping Downing and also uh, Williams. You know, Williams has, Williams has played, all, I think, pretty much all the games this season, just like Raya. Uh, so it's it's time to give him a bit of a breather, give uh, give Bell a bit of a moment to shine. I think Bell and Naimbi have got the same sort of style, as in, you know, they can run run for, for days uh, on end. So I think they'll complement each other. And then we'll have the level-headedness of Mulgrew and these fit again uh, abilities. Let's take a look at the statistics. Graham and Dak both on top with 13 goals. Mulgrew's there with 12. Dominic Samuel in fourth place with eight goals. Into the discipline. Smallwood's got nine. Bennett has got seven. Uh, Williams has got six. And Dak has got six yellow cards into the reds. Bennett has two. Samuel has one. Lewis Travis has one. Into the formwork for Rovers. Looks like this. Last time out, we beat Berry 2 0 at Ewood Park before beating Portsmouth 2 1 at Fratton Park. Back in the 10th of February, 2 2 draw at Ewood against Oldham Athletic. Uh, and then we have to go back to that shady result up against Plymouth Saturday, the 3rd of February, uh, when we lost uh, against Plymouth Argyle at Home Park. Uh, then all the way back, 30th of January, we mentioned it already, the 3 1 home win against Walsall. So let's take a look around the grounds, what's been going to go on this weekend in League One. Here I've circled some of the key fixtures that we've got to keep an eye on. Charlton against Shrewsbury. It's not an easy one for Shrewsbury if they're going to try and bounce back at the first attempt. They're going to have to take uh, take the sword to Charlton at the Valley. Meanwhile, Wigan take on Rochdale, who are struggling. They're at the foot of the table, but they've played a whopping, uh, what is it, six games fewer than a lot of teams above them so I don't think Rochdale will end down there obviously they've had a nice run in the FA Cup uh, I don't know if they're still in the Checker Trade Cup but uh, yeah those distractions could cause problems for Rochdale but hopefully Keith Hill and his boys will, uh, will keep going and get some remain in the division I've got a soft spot for Keith Hill obviously for his Rovers days the other match you've got to keep an eye on is Rotherham against Doncaster obviously Rotherham red hot at the moment but Doncaster are a stubborn side and they were a challenge to us at Ewood Park at the start of the season so it's no no walkovers in this league uh are the other interesting ones in there obviously Plymouth Argyle against Bradford that's a seventh versus eighth place uh clash a win for either side could get them back in the playoff contention and Scunthorpe where are they they take on Bristol Rovers at Bristol wherever that is hey but what I've had to say about the match what have the fans been saying about the build-up to the Walsall game let's take a look Blue Boy 33333, 18 games unbeaten using one formation, and we're discussing which formation to use in every thread. Don't know whether to blame Mowbray or FM. Uh, my tuppence worth. Three at the back has never worked for us. Does anyone else in League One bother with it, or is it just tactics, Tony? The forum of the BRFCS forum. If you haven't checked out the forum, make sure you do so. It's a great opportunity for you to chat with fellow Rovers fans, and maybe, just maybe, I might mention one of your amazing comments right here, right now. You know, just like old Greg, 86. Can't see anything but a comfortable Rovers win. Outplayed and outfought at Ewood. Not a physical side playing at home. They should be looking to attack. With us potentially having more fans than them. Should be quite demoralising on their behalf. And get our lads raring to go. 3-1 Rovers. Payne to net his first in a Rover shirt. And Armstrong to continue his scoring form. As for one Bill T. I think it's going to be a toughie. Also a strong side at home. They've lost just three at home all season. Only one more than us. But I think we can just about nick it. Also one Rovers. Two, Mulgrew and Lenehan is highest scorers. That's a bold one. Tyrone Shoelaces said, uh, play our best 11 and we should have enough in the tank to win. Play the five at the back. That will soon become seven at the back and we're asking for trouble. Meanwhile, Davo Le Secour. 4-2-3-1 uh, from the word go. We went 18 games unbeaten with that formation. So I don't know why we switched back to three as soon as we lost one game. His formation, Raya, Naimbi, Lenahan, Mulgrew, Bell, Smallwood, Bennett, Payne, Dak, Armstrong, and Graham. Pretty similar to mine. Uh, obviously, Payne is swapped out for Antonison. Um, it's debatable. You can, it's a coin toss between uh, Payne and Antonison. I think I would like to have a creative outlet on the bench. I think Antonison is a threat, just like Samuel is a threat, but I don't think they can create 
those moments, some special moments in a match that can uh, uh, win or win or bust the game. You know what I mean? We've got two players on there that could do that. I think Dak and Armstrong are very, you know, Armstrong has got the ability to shoot from anywhere in the park. And Dak can just create something out of nothing. And I think Payne falls more in the line of a Dak uh, than an Armstrong. Uh, as for Antonison, he's got the pace. You know, you don't want to throw so many similar players at, on at the same time because then you, you're going to be you're going to be uh, you know running rings around yourself. And I don't think that's uh, what what we need right now. I think a, a good impact sub like Chapman. But yeah, I, ju I just feel I just feel having another creative wizard on the bench to change things up if Dak gets an injury or you know Dax is just having a bad day or just not finding anything to have someone else with the creative mind uh, to come up with something else maybe something that Dax's not doing or, or or you know just just completely having a mental block then we could chuck pain on for that uh, reason elsewhere on the social media Ben Smith said this on the uh, Facebook pages. Yeah, 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 up the football league we go. When we win promotion, this is what we'll sing. We are Rovers, we are Rovers. Mowbray is our king. He said that actually, it was on Twitter. He said that on Twitter, on the uh, Shrewsbury feed, uh, after their draw, which must have felt like a loss against Gillingham. Meanwhile, Michael Andrew Mitchell said on the League One banter group, Saloppy second, in reference to Shrewsbury and their Salop. Meanwhile, being on Shrewsbury Twitter, it's all Rovers fans taking the piss. And it was. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you do so. It is a hoot. We've got to take our moments in the sun like these because they've been a long time coming. Don't know how long they're going to last. But, uh, yeah, let's just revel in it right now. And hopefully, hopefully it will last right until May, baby, when we get promotion, seal it in the bag, and return to the championship and rebuild. Now, you've heard what I've had to say about the match. You've heard what the fans have been saying about the match. But none of that really matters. What really matters is what Cast the Cat thinks will happen between Walsall and Blackburn at the best got. Pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Okay, so it's official. We are top of the league. We have played the same amount of games as Shrewsbury. Obviously, we're going to come back in back once they've got eliminated from the FA Cup. I think they take on Southampton next. But that is just added pressure on their shoulders. They're going to get further behind, just like Rochdale at the bottom of the table. Playing catch-up is not always the position you want to be in. But, and we've also got to take on um, Wigan at Ewood Park. So that's massive. And also, I've just I looked ahead at a couple of the guys' fixtures, the Shrewsbury and the Wigan. I know Wigan have got to play Rotherham. So hopefully they can continue their red-hot form just for a few weeks longer whenever they take on Wigan. And maybe they can cause them some problems. Um, but it's not plain sailing. There are some tricky hurdles for Rovers, for Shrewsbury and Wigan. So this, it's going to turn, turn itself around, I'm sure, about four or five times before the end of the season. But let's just hope that we remain in those top two space and is first and foremost back another win against Walsall. And let's hope that Shrewsbury and we're going to have another bad day at the office. Anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now.